Surveys show that the majority of the Mexican public has positive views of globalization and NAFTA, but much of the media reporting on the topic has focused on the negative effects of the trade agreement on agriculture. More specifically, on the idea that NAFTA has caused more unemployment in agriculture than in any other area of the economy. In this video, I'll discuss the possible effects of NAFTA on agriculture, but first I want to discuss some caveats. First, it's well known that as countries industrialize and become richer, employment tends to shift away from agriculture and into manufacturing. For instance, one paper showed in a sample of 76 countries that an increase of average per capita income of 1% was associated with a reduction in agriculture as a share of GDP by 0.6%. Take South Korea, for example, a country that industrialized very quickly in the post-World War II period. There, agriculture as a percentage of GDP fell from 25% in 1970 to 5% in 2000. Given that Mexico has become increasingly rich and more industrialized in the years since NAFTA was passed, it's difficult to account for all of the factors behind decline in agricultural employment. Second, many other changes have taken place in the Mexican economy during that time which could also affect agriculture. Most importantly, there have been unilateral reforms to agriculture starting in the late 1980s which have changed land ownership laws and eliminated price supports. So with those caveats in mind, let's discuss what has happened in Mexican agriculture since 1994. First, what did Mexican policymakers hope to have happen with NAFTA and agriculture? The argument was that the creation of this free trade area and Mexico's removal of price supports on basic commodities would lead to the equalization of agricultural prices across the three countries. The thinking behind this is that the U.S. was Mexico's most important trade partner for agricultural goods. The size and productivity of U.S. agriculture meant that it was a price setter in international markets, while Mexican agriculture was not. With freer markets, the price of imported agricultural goods in Mexico would fall to world prices. And the removal of import restrictions in the U.S. would allow Mexico to increase the export of goods that the country is competitive in, such as fruits and vegetables. Second, it was also believed that reducing protectionism would allow for cheaper imports of important agricultural goods, like tractors, irrigation, fertilizer, and improved seeds. Lastly, liberalization was thought to increase agricultural productivity. Farmers that could no longer compete with cheaper imported goods would have to sell their farms or use their farms to grow more competitive crops. So in that sense, it was always expected that NAFTA would have both positive and negative effects on Mexican agriculture in the short run. The idea was that in the long run, Mexico would benefit from lower prices and increased productivity. Because of the way that tariff reductions were phased in, most of the effect of NAFTA on agriculture would have happened in the 10 years after 1994. The trade of some goods was liberalized immediately but many others, especially for politically sensitive goods, faced a gradual phasing in of liberalized trade. So for instance, it wasn't until 2003 that barley was allowed to trade freely, and beans, maize, and powdered milk didn't reach that point until 2008. For fruits and vegetables, here's an idea of some of the phasing that did occur. Restrictions were immediately lifted on the trade of garlic, grapes, mangoes, pineapples, and strawberries. Limes, lemons, carrots, broccoli, onions, tomatoes, avocados started freely trading in 2003, while asparagus, cucumbers, peppers, oranges, and cantaloupe had to wait until 2008 before being restriction-free. From the 1980s until 2008, agriculture has represented a falling percentage of GDP in Mexico, which seems to indicate that the sector has been performing poorly. On the other hand, though, if Mexico is getting richer and more industrialized, this trend is exactly what we would expect to see, as I mentioned in the introductory slide. And finally, it's far from clear what effect NAFTA had specifically looking at these numbers since the trend started way before its implementation. So let's take a look at the components of agriculture and see how they have performed in recent decades. As you can see in this figure, field crops make up the overwhelming majority of agricultural production in Mexico, with livestock a distant second and fisheries and forestry behind that. While the percentages have changed throughout the years, the ordering hasn't. So let's take a look at what crops have been the most dominant and whether NAFTA has changed that. Maize continues to dominate field crop production in Mexico, even though its production fell from 35% to 25% of the total in the five years after the signing of NAFTA. The production of oil seeds has steadily fallen over the years, but fruits and vegetables have stayed relatively stable. Between 17% 17 and 20% for fruit, and 12 and 14 percent for vegetables. Sugar has stayed at almost the same percent for the entire period. In terms of livestock, chicken has taken on an increasing proportion of production since NAFTA was signed. It was roughly 17 percent of the total livestock in the period 1980 to 1988. 
In the 2005 to 2009 period, it made up 36% of the total. Cattle production has dropped slightly, although it still makes up the majority of livestock production. Pork production as a share of the total has fallen from 33% in the first period to 19% in the most recent period. Mexico's major field crops include rice, beans, barley, maize, sorghum, wheat, and soy, safflower, sesame seed, and cottonseed. The value and volume of these crops fell steadily from 1980 to 2004, although the drop was less severe in the years right after NAFTA. For instance, from 1980 to 1988, the value of production fell by almost 4%. From 1989 to 93, the value dropped by another minus 0.5%. Production still fell after 1994 and NAFTA, but by a bit less, by a minus 0.19%. It hasn't been until recently that crop production has seen a big comeback. From 2005 to 2009, the value has risen by almost 13%. And as was expected, vegetable production grew after NAFTA's passage, but it has slowed in the 2000s. Some of this might be due to the U.S. eliminating import restrictions on Central American fruits and vegetables after the signing of the Central American Free Trade Agreement in 2003. As for livestock, even though the volume of meat and live animals has increased in Mexico, only poultry has seen large increases in terms of the value of production. So what has happened to agricultural trade after NAFTA? Overall, trade in both agricultural goods in general and food specifically has doubled since NAFTA's passage in 1994. Both before and after NAFTA, the U.S. has been Mexico's main agricultural trading partner, making up about 80% of Mexico's agricultural trade. From 1993 to 2003, Mexico's agricultural exports to the U.S. increased from $2.7 billion to $6.3 billion. Imports from the U.S. also rose sharply during this time, going from $3.6 billion to $7.9 billion. And to put it in perspective, Mexico was the sixth biggest importer of U.S. agriculture in 1990. By 2008, it was the second biggest importer. The products that have experienced the largest export increases were sugar, which has gone up almost 600%, beverages not including fruit juice, again almost by 600%, and grains and feed by about 330%. What happened to agricultural prices after NAFTA? As expected, ending price supports and opening up import competition led to a drop in the price of basic crops. For example, in the year before NAFTA was signed, Corn cost $4.84 a bushel in Mexico. Three years later, the price had fallen to $3.65. Of course, this was good news for Mexican consumers, who tend to eat a lot of corn in their daily diet. It was difficult, though, for corn farmers. Nunez Naude, a Mexican academic, found evidence of price convergence between the U.S. and Mexico for a number of basic crops, including maize, wheat, and sorghum. The Institute for International Economics researched the possible effects of NAFTA on Mexican agriculture and estimated that 800,000 workers may lose their job as productivity and efficiency increased after 1994. Surveys of rural population and employment, however, have found that they stayed relatively constant from 1985 to 2001. The composition of Mexican agriculture does seem to have changed, though, with liberalization. One paper showed that commercial farmers shifted into export-oriented crops and that the productivity of land increased, but only really for irrigated farmland. In general, it seems like the expectations about NAFTA, namely that it might hurt subsistence farmers and benefit large commercial farms, were more or less correct. There is less information about agricultural wages, but the evidence we do have shows that they have fallen consistently since NAFTA when considered as a percentage of construction and industrial wages. In sum, the prices of field crops have mostly fallen over time and converged to the world market. Agricultural productivity in Mexico has increased in large commercial farming that have irrigation systems. Subsistence farming, on the other hand, has seen much less improvement. Not surprisingly, there are regional disparities that still exist. Agriculture in southern Mexico faces high transportation costs, insufficient irrigation, and inadequate infrastructure. The gains that NAFTA have brought have fallen mostly to agriculture in the central and northern parts of the country. Even though we've covered a fair amount of ground in this video, we're in many ways just scratching the surface on this interesting topic. If you want more information on these issues, I would recommend the following two papers. Most of the information in this video, including all of the figures, is from an excellent 2012 working paper that I referenced by Antonio Yunez Naude called The Effects of Agricultural Domestic and Trade Liberalization on Food Security, Lessons from Mexico. The other paper is by Angeles Villarreal and is called NAFTA and the Mexican Economy. It's a Congressional Research Service report published in 2010.